All right, you guys, this is Ross, the Fig Boss. So I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing me talk about Smith. Uh, we just did a video very recently talking about its production. We talked about how great of uh, the flavor is on it and how you know, it really coats your tongue and it's kind of like a nice wine that really coats your mouth. Uh, we talked about how sticky the pulp is and how that really is uh, an amazing texture and that food is not really just all about the flavor. A lot of it is about the texture as well. Um, and now we're like a week or two later after that video and here I am talking once again about the texture of Smith because it's kind of been very interesting to observe this year. The weather has been really great. I mean, we've had our rain here and there. Um, it's been very warm for the most part. The nights are still in the 70s. When you have nights here in the Philadelphia area in the 70s, you get some really great quality figs. Uh, when the nighttime temperatures start to drop down to like 60, the quality does go down. And then when it goes down to 50, it really starts to go down. Um, so right now we're just ripening great figs. I mean, even if it is raining a bit here and there, the fact that it's just so warm, the figs are ripening very quickly. The hang time on the fruits is very short for the most part. You know, maybe an average hang time we normally would see, let's say 15 to 30 days from now would be about seven-ish days. Whereas most of them right now are probably ripening at the five day mark in terms of hang time, which is great um, on average. So Smith though, as I said in that video, is really thick and, and, and sticky, but the, the few figs I've been having quite recently, we've been really honing in the water on these trees, especially the potted trees. You know, it's a little bit more difficult with some of the in-ground trees. I have some areas that are, are more, they have a drier soil than others. And I think um, I've seen the quality, by the way, just greatly improve this year because of sort of how dry it is in the area in the front. I've ripened some quality, quality figs off of those trees that I think personally would rival something in like California that wasn't caprified. It's just been in such, you know, that area over there is so dry. And even in, with these pots, you know, it's, you find that sweet spot, guys, in the soil moisture, you're gonna ripen the best quality fruits. It's tough, it's a little tricky at first. You know, the season starts, you try to get them growing, and that's the key, right? Water them a lot, because you wanna get them growing to form that main crop, and a lot of that main crop. But then as the season keeps going and you start to see those fruits, you wanna slow down that water. And then as the, the fruits are now ripening on a lot of these trees, you wanna slow it down even further. And then you wanna slow it down even more after that, believe it or not, to help lignify the branches and stop the trees from growing. So right now I'm like very close to almost not watering them at all. And you know, you have to give them some water. You know, a lot of people I think at this point can make the mistake cause you, got, you gotta find that sweet spot, right? Some people, you know, don't water them enough. And I've done this with a couple of my trees right now especially the ones in the front that, like I said, it's very dry there. Uh, even in ground, it's just super dry and they need some water. And, you know, you end up seeing when, when it's too dry, you'll start to see a lot of yellowing leaves or the leaves might fall off lower down on the tree. Uh, but really what you can definitely see very easily is actually that the fruits will start to, to shrivel. Um, you might start to see some fruits that are dropping like this fruit down here is quite yellow compared to the one above it, which is green. Uh, this is a Smyrna, I believe, this particular variety, but that's kind of what, what happens is that the, the fruits start to turn a little bit yellow and they start to uh, really start to desiccate and shrivel and then they'll fall off and you'll, you'll end up losing the fruits. Um, and you'll even see weird fruits that are ripening. You know, I have, um, a variety in the front that's ripening called Salato. And that particular tree has about seven or eight figs that are actually swelling and ripening right now. And it really desperately needed some water. So I would imagine those seven or eight figs that are ripening probably won't be of the best quality. I mean, they're gonna be a little weird. Uh, yeah, I, I say this all the time, less water is better for that quality, but you wanna have enough to make sure that they're ripening properly, right? You know, if the fruit's not going to ripen correctly, then there's going to be something wrong with it. And you're going to lose out a little bit on quality. So that's kind of what I've been doing with these potted trees, guys. I have them all on a drip timer. I'm watering them only um, four minutes a day 
four minutes a day, every day. Uh, and the, the gallon per hour emitter here is these spot spitters. I think it's 1.8 gallons per hour, I think. So if you took 1.8 gallons an hour uh, divided by 60, and then you would get the amount of gallons it, it puts out in a minute or every minute, and then you would times that by four because they only do it by f only four minutes, you would know exactly how much water this, uh, this Smith tree is getting. Actually, believe it or not, this is a, a bigger emitter I have here for this one. So this is like a 3.6 gallon per hour emitter on this very mature 10 gallon Smith tree. So 3.6 gallons per hour, like I said, uh, divided by 60 times four, that's what you would get you'll know exactly how much water I give my trees every single day. And you'll find out that it really isn't a lot. It's just so small. It barely is enough to keep these trees happy and healthy. Uh, you know, that's what I'm saying. You gotta find that sweet spot. Now that I've found the sweet spot, and it's been like that for weeks, um, the figs have been slowly and slowly getting better and better and better. The, fir the first couple figs, if you guys noticed some of my videos in the beginning, of the season really we just weren't that great. Um, even though it was quite warm and we were in July and we were ripening Brabas, we even had some main crop in very early August, the fruits just weren't great, but they were good. Now that, as I said, the, dial, the water's been dialed back, it's been so warm here, the texture of these fruits is changing. The, the qualities of these fruits is changing. So now Smith, and this is what I'm getting at, is that I have three Smiths here and I've been picking a couple actually that I was eating uh, about three or four days ago. And I'm like, holy crap, I'm, I feel like I'm eating a cold Adam, but better. Like I feel like I'm eating this like as good as it gets. Like I had this epiphany, it was like, I have not had many fruits that are better than that. Like I can name you probably some cold Adams that were just as good or maybe slightly better. I've definitely had a De La Roca or a couple De La Roca figs that were better. Um, you know, in terms of my absolute best tasting figs I've ever had that I've ripened here, you know, Smith's just right up there with them. I mean, it's just, it's crazy to think that people, um, don't grow this fig. I, I, I just am like dumbfounded at this point. Um, and it makes total sense in so many climates to grow that piece of fruit. Now, if you're in a low light environment, I really wouldn't recommend it, but you got to have like only six hours of light for me to really say no, or seven hours of light. You know, this patty doesn't get a lot, but it still ripens the fruits. It still sets the fruits. This guy over here that's ripening is the Paradiso Bode. This is one of the best tasting figs I grow. Uh, the Paradiso Ciro is one of the best tasting figs I grow. Um, the, uh, let's see. I, I would argue Hatib de Argentile is very, very good. Uh, so is probably Rosalino. Um, Verdino del Nord is incredibly tasty. But, you know, putting it in that upper echelon, you could probably put just a couple fruits in that category. Uh, at least I'm probably forgetting about some, to be honest with you. But at least the top fruit that I've ever ripened here is a De La Roca. It is my best tasting fig. I would highly recommend it for so many, so many people. Then I think right under that is the Col de Doms and right alongside it is Smith. I mean, they really do produce, like I know this quality isn't gonna happen every single year because it's been so warm and you know, also I'm ripening them at a good time. Although I, you know, Having them in a pot, it's easy to get them at this time of the year. Uh, you know, I'm dialing the, the water in perfectly. Um, so there's a lot of factors here that maybe I can't replicate every single year. It could just be that my, my tree is just a little bit more mature. You know, the tree at this point is probably like approaching five years old. So you get that maturity combined with all these elements that I've mentioned, you just get an incredibly good tasting piece of fruit. And I'm gonna cut these open for you guys. Um, and we'll see if some of these are kind of along the lines of what I've been thinking they are. 
um, you know, those couple fruits I had were just mind-blowingly good. I mean, like I said, I was just like in awe, like this is as good as it gets. This is as good as it gets. And again, people just don't, I mean, they don't give this variety enough credit because, well, it's common or it's been all over the South. Like this one right here, I know for sure is going to be dense and cakey. So here's a little interesting thing we'll do because I have fruits from not just uh, one of the, my, my most mature Smith. I have fruits from actually a more immature tree. So this guy here is a little bit less mature. And we'll know, I guess, based off the texture, if this is, you know, based on maturity or if it's just really based on the weather and the water that I've been, I've been doing. This one right here really does look as if it's going to be extremely cakey. So I don't know what it is about the appearance exactly, But there's something about the appearance of that that really reminds me. It just it just looks a lot thicker, a lot cakier, like a Col de Dom, right? The Col de Doms are very cakey. Things like Azores Dark, Malta Black, uh, even Smith, they've been very sticky, right? They coat your tongue. They have this really awesome, pleasant, you know, experience. This is one that's very cakey. I I opened this up. It's been sitting on the counter for I think two days now. You can see it hasn't molded. It's been, it's been sitting on my counter. The bricks is so high in this, it doesn't matter. Um, and then of course, this one was extremely cakey. This one here I imagine probably is less cakey, also from the more mature tree. And then this one here is from the less mature tree that you can see has a little bit more of that nectar in there. And as I kind of am noticing is that the fruits this year on some of these trees just have less nectar. I have been, I think, really controlling that water to a very perfect degree. And I think it's, I think it's affecting the nectar in there. And I, because the nectar then affects the texture. When you have a lot of that nectar, a lot of that honey, it ends up making it a bit more watery or more syrupy. You know what I mean? A bit more loose. When a cold adam and I ripen them here, they're very thick because they don't have a lot of nectar in them. So let me try this one here, which I believe is gonna be very thick. Yeah. It's not as, it's not as thick as a cold adam. Well, that one is. So that's the one I had where I was like, I gotta stop what I'm doing right now. I gotta save these fruits. I gotta do, do a video on this because it's just so incredible. It's right up there, guys, with the cold Adam or some of my, some of my most thick interior figs like Sultane and, um, you know, like I said, the Paradiso figs are very thick. Juale Noir. All right, let's try this one. This one I thought was gonna be not as thick. Yeah. So these are the sticky ones. They're not thick in, in a cakey way, they're sticky. This one here is from a more immature tree. That one's approaching, approaching that cake, guys. And I've said this before, like the texture on these, some of them, like the cold adam, it's like eating a cake made out of figs. Like a, like nature created cake. Some people say that some figs are like jam on a tree. And I agree with that, but some of them are like cake on a tree. I, I promise you. Um, this one's very good. So I think it's just the weather, personally. I think it's just how much I'm controlling the water. It's not really the age of the tree. And I've always theorized that, guys, is that People are always so quick to say, oh, it's the age of the tree, it's the age of the tree, it's the age of the tree. If you had a very young tree, I mean, I'm talking about even just like a one gallon size pot, like one of these, one of these things. Look at this. This is a fig here called LSU Strawberry I have in a pot. It's got three figs on it, only two leaves. 
this little tree, I'm telling you, could produce very, very high quality fruit. And the reason for that is if you control the water really well, I mean, if I was really trying to control the water, I'm just trying to keep it happy and healthy at this point, I'm trying to ripen these fruits. But if I was really diligent on a young tree like this, from the start in which the figs formed until the figs ripened, I would have a very high quality piece of fruit. And people are very quick to say, oh, it's a young tree. It's not gonna produce high quality fruit, but it's just not, it's not true. Uh, you can get very high quality fruits off of young trees and it's, it's kind of shown right here. Although this, this fruit really is, it's not the youngest tree in the world. It's still probably three years old. So, uh, you know, not the best example, but it just goes to show you that Ages and everything, it's really all in that water for the most part. Um, at least that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. So that's kind of the video here, guys. I know this wasn't everything about Smith, although that's what we mostly talked about, but there were some other things and techniques and, and thoughts we have just on the eating experience of figs. So hopefully you bear with me there. You got to the end. I thank you. Hit that subscribe button for me. We'll see you soon. Take care. I'll catch you guys for the next video.